Okay, so we've got to talk. Now this is going to be far more informal than some of my previous videos with a little less editing. Mainly because this will mostly just be me standing on my soapbox. So get ready for the discourse because plenty of people have already thrown their two cents in on this matter, so I thought I would too. Amidst all of the trends that were born during the 4th gen K-pop era so far, there have been some that I've liked and some that have left me scratching my head a little bit. One trend in particular is the one that's been most puzzling. What's up with companies not giving their idols group positions anymore? On the flip side, why is it that when they do give them positions, they're not faithful to the idols that they give those positions to? Now this topic has been bouncing around my head for a little while now, but it became far more prominent after listening to Ive's pre-release catch yesterday. Now, the song is great, and that's fine, but I'm not here to talk about that. I've already reviewed it in a previous video. We're here to talk about something that's a little bit more controversial. Now, most of you likely already know exactly what I'm hinting at, so let's just ask the question that's been on everybody's brain since Ketch's release yesterday. Why the hell did Liz, who is supposedly Ives' main vocalist, get six damn seconds in a whole three minute and 15 second song? Now obviously, I don't know for sure what the hell is going on here, but I'm willing to take a few guesses just for argument's sake. A couple of these assumptions might piss some people off, but they have to be said because the discussion is needed. And I'm genuinely curious to see what others think. One assumption is just me playing devil's advocate again, but with a tiny bit of a twist. I'll let you know what I mean by that later. And don't worry, this video won't be just about Liz. There are plenty of other main vocalists who suffer from this industry-wide syndrome. Now, she'll be the main focus, but she won't be the sole focus. So, let's get on to the discussion. IVE is a six-member girl group that debuted under Starship Entertainment on December 1st, 2021. Did you hear that? Yeah, I said IVE is a six-member girl group. Keep that in mind because it will be significant for today's discussion. During IVE's debut, Liz was apparently number one in line distribution, and for good reason. The girl has the best voice in the entire group, hands down, second to none, with only one other member possibly able to rival her being Eugene. Now that's no shade toward the other members. I like I. I like their music, I like their chemistry as a group, despite many people swearing that they have none. But a fact is a fact, Liz is the strongest vocalist. So tell me why she's been ranked so low amongst her title tracks lately. Now I know what some of you are gonna say, because it's the same thing that many people say about other groups when line distribution issues become hot topics. Well, Liz gets more lines in the B-sides, and yes, that's probably very true. I'm just a casual fan. I'm not going to sit here and claim to know every single thing about their discography. I'm just telling you how I feel from the perspective of a casual stand. The average K-pop fan who doesn't stand a group probably isn't going to delve any deeper than the title tracks when they're browsing a group's catalog. Their first impressions are going to be made from the title tracks alone. You can't expect someone who isn't fully invested in a group to set aside time to scope out their entire discography. Is it fair that people think that way? No. But that's just how some K-pop stands are. Hell, that's just how people are in general. Few people are gonna go out of their way to entertain something that doesn't interest or amuse them enough. If they aren't a fan of this group, then they're most likely just gonna make blanket statements about said group with little knowledge of anything beyond what little they've seen or heard from others. Now, on the flip side, you could also say, well, the opinions of casual stands mean nothing in the long run. And you're free to make that argument. No one should be making uninformed statements until they have all of the necessary information to better enrich their mindset. I agree with that. But again, humans don't work like that. People say stupid and ill-advised and misinformed shit all of the time about all manner of things. The reasoning behind that a lot of the time is simply because they just like to hear themselves talk. And those are the people you should ignore. My opinion today stems from how blatant it is that Liz is being shafted and Starship is doing a very poor job of covering it up. Now obviously I don't know for sure why her lines in their songs have been so limited lately, but the running theory has been the most heinous 
and I pray for the love of God that it isn't true. Because if Starship is seriously lessening this girl's lines in some subtle way to bully her into losing weight, then they need to be held accountable. What's interesting is that some people have even claimed that they might be doing this for her own good, attempting to protect her from the hate train of people making fun of her weight. If that's truly their intent, then I'd say, all right, your heart is in the right place, but your execution could use some work. Hiding her from the world because of her weight fixes nothing. What it actually does is breed more hate and more negative speculation. And guess who's gonna be the one who has to deal with that? Liz, she is the idol after all. She is the one that everyone sees dancing around on stage and the person that people line up to see at fan signs. She is also the one who ultimately suffer having to read comments during live streams and having to see the same toxic discourse surrounding her lack of lines anytime she decides to Google herself to see what the world's saying about her. And though she might say that negative comments don't bother her, she is still the one who'll suffer. Now, I'm not gonna act as though I know how mentally sound she is. Obviously, I don't know Liz personally, so it's not for me to judge what she is and isn't capable of handling. But even the most mentally sound person in the world has a breaking point. You might be the kind of person who never lets negativity get to you. But be honest, there's still that one thing that triggers you. That one thing that could easily make you go off no matter how fine you were beforehand. If Liz is continuously shafted of lines for the duration of her career, and the reasoning is her weight, then eventually it's going to get to her. And Starship won't be the one who has to pay the price for that in the long run. So if Starship thinks that lessening her lines and pushing her to the back of the music video is somehow shielding her from hate and harm, then they are wrong. Because in a six-member girl group, it's damn near impossible to just ignore when one member is severely overshadowed, especially when the company makes it so damn obvious. If this were triple S or even twice, then I could almost understand. Those groups have many members in them. It would be nearly impossible for every single member to shine during every comeback. But the very least that JYP tries to do is to ensure that even if a member has less lines than everyone else, then they'll most likely make up for it by giving them extra screen time. Liz wasn't even allotted this much during the Kitsch music video. And that right there makes it feel far more intentional and almost malicious. From what I've been told, this is nothing new for Starship. Just today, I came across an article on kpopstars.com that features Starship former girl groups to star. This article was posted on August 11, 2014, right around the time Sistar released their iconic Touch My Body comeback. In this article, they decide to talk about the many diet restrictions that Starship imposed on them during their tenure with the company. Hyolin flat out said that managers would personally supervise what they ate during their trainee days. She even states that they were pretty much counting the amount of calories they ate in a single sitting. She even said that at some point, she and Soyu would purposely overeat out of spite just to get the managers to leave them alone. In this article, Soyu admits to struggling with severe body image issues. Managers would count how much rice she and the other girls ate and then chastise them if they got too chubby. She also stated that Starship gave her a food journal and ordered her to record every spoonful of rice that she ate during a meal. This treatment got so bad that she would sneak off to the bathroom to keep from being harassed by the managers while she ate. Apparently, the woman weighed about 49 kilograms at the time of debut. That's about 108 pounds for those of us in America still using the imperial system of measurement. So she weighed 108 pounds and the managers still weren't happy? I don't know if Starship's management has changed that much since 2014, but if they're more concerned with keeping their idols underfed rather than protecting them from the assholes who attack them for their weight, then they have failed as a proper employer. They have also failed as proper guardians. Liz debuted under Starship at 17 years old, pretty much still a child to be honest. Her parents entrusted their daughter's well-being with them. That includes her mental wellness. Now, I would never want to be the type of parent who tells her daughter that she shouldn't pursue her dreams simply because of any potential hardship she's sure to face. But if it comes at the price of her mental soundness and her physical health, all because Starship is too cowardly to stand up to the idiots dogpiling on her because of her weight, then it's not worth it. The girl just wants to sing. That's it. Her weight should have no bearing on whether or not she gets to do that. She just wants to sing. And Starship needs to let her. Damn. I said I'd talk about other shafted main vocalists too, didn't I?
Oh well, this video was already going on for much longer than I intended it to, so I guess I'll sign off here. Y'all let me know what your thoughts are on this and name some other main vocalists that you believe are getting the same treatment. Obviously, it doesn't have to be for the same reasons, but also, try to keep the conversation civil and constructive, okay? K-pop is already full of enough negativity.